boy oh boy the phage is back and this time our heart is no longer beating properly so we're gonna have to go in there and basically make our own pacemaker to to keep things pumping the way that they should be so we're gonna go into this really quickly <laughs> to fix our heart up uh so here's what's basically happening our central nervous system is going to put out a signal and we need to relay the proper the proper behavior to a couple of the nerves that are connected to our heart i actually got a little bit curious and i went to go see exactly what these nerves were so san refers to the sinoatrial node and this is all from chat gpt it is called the natural pacemaker the node is located in the upper part of the right atrium and it generates electrical impulses that initiate each heartbeat setting the heart's rhythm and then the avian is the atrioventricular node located between the atria and the ventricles it acts as a gateway for electrical impulses coming in from the sa node uh, and it slightly delays the signal before it passes into the ventricles allowing the atria to contract fully before the ventricles start to contract now this is actually this was actually quite fascinating to me because that's basically what we're going to have to tell our heart to do what we're going to do is we're going to send a signal to the san and then a signal to the avian right after so to accomplish this, because we have three different nerds, nerves that need to be communicating with each other uh, and they need to be running permanently, you can see that there is no leave no trace uh, objective here. We're going to send one execution agent to each of the nerves. A is going to handle the central nervous system. B is going to handle the sinoatrial one. And the C is going to go to the ventricular one that I can't remember the full name for. Uh, so we're going to send these guys out. They're going to go and do their thing. And what's going to happen is XA is going to receive this signal of minus 42. What has to happen is we need to divide this value by negative 10, which should give us four. Uh, and then we are going to tell XB, so the SA needs to get a signal of 40 sent out, and then it needs to send negative 70 for uh, three more cycles so and that number so a total of four cycles the 40 and then three minus 70s to get the total of four that we got from this signal so when we get minus 64 on the next one that one has to be uh a total of six so we send out 40 and then minus 75 times to get our total of six signals the avn the the ventricular node is similar but it needs to be delayed so it'll have a negative 70 first then the 40 and then negative 70s to fill out that grand total so what happens is a is going to do the calculation to figure out this is how many times we need to beat so a total of four or how many cycles we need to go through and what it's going to do is it's going to transfer uh two under that number to B and C. And I do this for efficiency's sake because the beginning of each one of these is going to be different. For B, it's going to do 40 and minus 70 because we need the 40 to go first in this one. And then XC is going to do minus 70 and then 40. And one of the reasons that I had to do it this way is because I wanted to make sure that XB and XC are receiving signals at the same rate, which means their loops need to be in sync with one another, because if one of them gets too out of sync, they may end up trying to read signals too quickly. You'll see that I have no real protection for XA. XA just writes the value twice to M. It doesn't make sure that the value is actually being read by both B and C. I don't have any kind of security like that. So I basically need B and C to be ready to receive the same signal at the same time, even if we're, you know, a dozen of iterations through this loop. So I wanted them to be the same. So I told B and C, the hard code, here's your first two, 40 and minus 70, and then minus 70 and then 40 for B and C, respectively. Then if there's anything left, so we've already put out two. So if there's any other total that we need to put out, which in this case, there's two more signals that need to be put out, uh, you'll see that they will loop through. Uh, they, they are copying that value into T. We're using my favorite T loop trick and we're subtracting one to uh, continue to put out minus 70s until we run out. And then once we have put out our proper number of signals, you see B and C have both finished putting out their values. They're now listening to get this four that was derived minus 64 divided by negative 10 gives us six, minus two gives us four. So that's basically saying you're gonna have to put out an extra four more minus 70s 
uh, following your first two pattern that you've been established. And you'll see that this pattern is going to continue for all of these. The, the structure of your nerves is the same, it's just the values that vary. And I think I've noticed the values are usually between minus 30 and minus 90. I haven't seen it go below or above that amount. But uh, the minus 30 is rough and, that's, and it, it shows why aligning B and C, their loops together, is important for efficiency here. Because if they get out of sync, you might get B reading a signal that was that was meant for A, but or I'm sorry, B reading a signal that was meant for C, but C was too slow to catch it. So you really want to make sure that they're lined up. But we got our heart pumping, and we actually ended up performing very well in efficiency on that one. So that was I was pretty happy to see that.